this up just a little bit. Thank you all for being here. Um, and Jessica Milson, thank you for all your efforts, not just emceeing, but helping orchestrate this. Uh, uh, I want to thank everyone involved. Uh, this is actually the first time I've been here since the, 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 the it's not complete implementation, but the significant implementation of Bobby R. Park. And I still remember vividly the first time um, Larry Meisel came into my office. And, and kind of on the back of an envelope sketched out what he thought would be an appropriate memorial to uh, to Bobby R. And of course, being the candid person I was, I said, what's Bobby R? And he says, that's the problem. Uh, and there are a lot of other people here. Uh, uh, Anna Cesarski from the Jewish uh, Family Services and Ellen Primack from the Meisel Museum. Uh, I see Peggy Lehman here. Uh, long-term councilwoman. You know, Bobby R. had 33,000 people murdered on, on this day 72 years ago was, was part of the hidden Holocaust, right? Most people know of Auschwitz and Kristallnacht, the Warsaw Ghetto, but Bobby R. was the site of one of the largest uh, massacres in the Holocaust, of all the massacres, one of the largest. And yet, certainly in this country, one of the least known. Uh, and, you know, that's the, the, the challenge uh, and this, this notion of, of remembrance. Uh, how do we keep those people who died, Bobby R., alive? And how do we expand the awareness of, of what happened there to, to more people? H how many people here have been to to uh, Yad Vashem, right? How many, how, here's a question, how many of you are Jewish? Well, a significant number, but not complete. Um, and I think that's part of our challenge, is that this should not be uh, an audience of the Jewish community, right? This should be an audience of Coloradans and of Americans, people who care about the world community. Uh, you know, Colorado has a remarkable history of standing up for uh, for what's right and for tolerance, uh, even when it's uncomfortable and unpopular. Ralph Carr, governor in the early 1940s, who spoke out against the Japanese internments, even though it cost him his reelection. Um, we were one of the very first states to grant uh, women's suffrage, voting rights to women, something some people still question today. Just That's a joke, just kidding. Uh, and we're the first state to have a significant memorial to Bobby Yar. You know, I had a writing teacher in college who said, he said, everything has been said, but not everything has been said superbly. And even if it had, everything must be said freshly again and again, right? Not everything's been said superbly, but even if it had, we have to say it freshly again and again. And that's part of what this, what this park and this memorial and this event today are trying to do is, is, is say it in a fresh way that you will hear. And I think the, the idea should be that each year this grows and that perhaps each of you next year try to find someone who particularly is not Jewish and, and get them to come and hear some of these stories and hear what we, those, those two descriptions, firsthand narratives of what happened, let other people I'm not, sure what we, I'm not sure what we call this as we expand it. We should have a, a program. Maybe we call it Bring a Mensch or, or something. Um, you know, Bobby R. Park here in Denver is one of the few permanent memorials uh, in the world uh, of, of Bobby R. Uh, but it's a place where we remember not just Bobby R., but, but the other atrocities. Um, uh, recently added sculpture, sculpture commemorating uh, the attacks uh, of 9-11. Uh, but this becomes a place to ensure that none of us forget, and a place that we bring our out-of-town guests, uh, we bring our, our, our closest friends and loved ones, our children, our families. Um, you know, racism and xenophobia go back and, and, you know, I'm dyslexic, so I never really studied history, but now I have, now I don't have to read the book for a class, so now I get to read all the time, slowly, but all the time. And racism and xenophobia comes in cycles, it comes in waves. Uh, but there are certain things that 
you can see in those cycles, oftentimes it's preceded by an increase in partisanship, in, 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 in emotional outbreaks of hatred and, and intolerance to other people's points of view. Uh, you know, we see this today, I think too often. If you look at what's, what passes for political discourse in Washington all too often. Uh, again, I'm not saying anyone should, should run to, you know, to, to, to increase the security on their home or, you know, arm themselves. But I do find it very disconcerting that many of the, of the types of things we've seen in other waves of, of hatred and xenophobia we see right now. And, and the way, if you listen to talk radio about how some people talk about the immigration issues. And the challenge is not whether you, you're right or you're wrong about the issue. It's, a, it's, it's whether you can listen to somebody else's point of view, right? That you can have a discussion that's based on the facts. You can take the time to agree to what the facts are, but then have that, that discussion in a, in a safe, open environment. And, and we're losing that step by step. Um, I think the, the challenge for all of us is to figure out how do we avoid that and, and, and what the world did after, uh, after Bobby R, right, where there was a, a I think, a tragic permissiveness uh, that allowed thousands, thousands of slaughters, uh, millions of people uh, to occur. That apathy and indifference, you know, really was, was part of what allowed the Nazis to, to, to massacre 11 million people. George Bernard Shaw said, the worst sin towards our fellow creatures is not to hate them, but to be indifferent to them. And that's the, that's the essence of inhumanity, he said. And I think that's part tied into this when we, so many of us, when we see those, that anger and the hatred and the, that, that extreme emotion tied to political issues, it turns us off, we turn away. That apathy, that indifference is the worst thing we can do. Right? And I think each of us has that challenge to find ways of discussing it, finding fresh ways to discuss it, oftentimes with the people that seem the most dug into their positions. And, and each of us will find a, a different avenue to try and reach them and, and create that, that conversation. Because I think that's the only way it's going to work is it's thousands and thousands and millions of those conversations and finding out the right way through our arts, you know, whether it's drama or plays, uh, television, uh, music, that, that, that we begin to get people to reevaluate where they are. When I went to Yad Vashem, and it is, it is the most amazing museum experience. At one point we stood right outside the, the part of it that's for Bobby R. And we stood there for about 15 or 20 minutes and literally Every single group of people that came through broke down into tears. Every single one. I've never been in a museum like that. And, and I love museums. I go to a great many museums. Never seen anything like that. And there, it was full of people. It was a weekday. Um, it, it, is, it, it was remarkably compelling. And I think somehow we have to take what is in Yad Vashem and find the the words and the images to, to again, we'll never be able to recreate, recreate in our everyday conversations, but we can try and we can begin looking at what, what those images would, would, would look like and what those narratives uh, would include, right? And we're in a, a time of, you know, bullet communications, right? Uh, Twitter, you know, uh, Facebook, short staccato bits of communication. We have to adapt ourselves to that as well. Uh, some people have found this ways to talk about these things for years. See, our auditor Dennis Gallagher is here, uh, is one of the most adept at finding fresh ways to, to describe these things. But we all have that challenge. Uh, today we're honoring the mem memory of those who lost their lives of, in that tragedy and others, but we have to remind ourselves that, of what can happen when we allow racism in any direction to be embraced as public policy. Right? And what happens when, when good people, good, honest people remain silent? Um, the Book of Numbers says, do not be indifferent to the bloodshed inflicted on your fellow man. You know, that is as timeless as there ever was. Um, 
we're going to have this responsibility to carry on the lessons and the history of the Holocaust, uh, to teach the lessons of tolerance and compassion, uh, to teach the lessons of humanity. Uh, you know, there are a number of traditions in the world, cultural traditions, and, and also in the Jewish tradition, that as long as people are remembered, they live on. And I think that's part of what we've done with when we had the shootings in Aurora, we made sure we, we, we mentioned every person's name. We do it at every annual uh, vow then. So that memory is for the sake of future generations. As long as we can keep those names and those people alive in our thoughts and our minds, uh, the next generation will, will be less likely to si slip into this inaction. Um, and I think whether we're talking about genocide in Africa or bullying in the playground, right? It all comes from the same roots. And in each case, we can either sit quietly and, and, and have this passive acceptance, or we can act. It can be a quiet, discreet intervention. It can be bold and direct, but we need to act. Justice Louis Brandeis of the US Supreme Court said, most of the things worth doing in the world have been declared impossible before they were done. And I had talked to somebody about this event yesterday and the challenge of getting people to really own the Holocaust and remember it. And they said, well, that's kind of impossible. I mean, you know, the, the world's changing too quickly. People won't remember it. Most of the things worth doing in the world have been declared impossible before they were done. Right? And I think that's, again, the truer words were never spoken. And if we put our minds to it, it's, it's certainly not impossible. Uh, humanity is always going to trump over indifference, whether it's in our, in our state or our nation, whether it's in our community or our homes. Uh, humans are always going to bend towards justice. So each of us have that opportunity every day to build, you know, build towards peace and build towards acceptance. Um, build towards acceptance, uh, the, the, the respect of all people. Um, and I think each of us have that chance to, to lead by example. Thank you.